Hi guys, thought I'd just like to do a little video on ballasting transformers. Now, when we talk about ballasting, we usually talk about putting something in series with the primary of the transformer, or in the case of capacitors, in series with the secondary as well. Now, the main purpose of ballasting is to limit current. So, as you can see here, we have three typical methods of ballasting a transformer there's the inductive ballast. A series resistance, i.e. a lamp, and a capacitor. Right guys, I don't want to get too much into the details of how these things work, but basically the capacitor can only let so much through on each half of the cycle, and that's dictated by the microfarad rating of the capacitor. The lamp is just a resistor, therefore shares the load. What I want to focus on today though guys, is the inductive ballast. So the inductive ballast is my preferred method of ballasting transformers. The inductive ballast, or choke as it's more appropriately called, actually limits the current by inducing a magnetic field that's opposing to the current flow. Therefore, only so much current can pass through on each half cycle. But what's particularly interesting about this type of ballast is we not only can we use it to limit current, but we can actually use it to get more voltage from our transformers. And I will demonstrate right, that. Right guys. So we've got a small setup here, just to show the current limiting properties of the magnetic ballast. So we've got our voltage source there, indicated by the meter, and that's our input voltage. Then we've got our series choke, obviously here, and then we've got a lamp, which is obviously consuming the uh, current. So as you can see, the lamp's lit at nearly full brightness. There's a small amount of current limit here, but obviously it's only a small lamp, so not a major amount. So what I'll demonstrate now, guys, is that this does in fact limit the current. So we'll just take a lead and we'll actually short out this lamp and we can observe what happens. As you can see guys, we've still got full voltage on the input, but the lamp's not lit. Therefore the ballast is actually limiting the current. Right guys, just to demonstrate this a little further, I've placed a meter on there now, so we can actually observe the current when I actually short out the lamp. There you go guys, we can see it shoots up to 1.6 amps. And that's the maximum current we can actually draw from this circuit with this ballasting series. Obviously we can place more ballasts in parallel with this and that will obviously up the current rating or we can choose a different ballast. Right, so now we've had another ballast in parallel with the first and we'll just short that lamp out again and observe the current. As you can see this time guys, the current's much higher, 4.6 amps. So as you can see guys, we can choose different ballasts depending on the maximum current we want to be able to be drawn from the circuit. So we can see how this might be useful when we use this technique with transformers. Right guys, so on my bench we've got a microwave oven transformer. It's rather a large microwave oven transformer, but it is a microwave oven transformer. And what we need to do is establish a benchmark for this transformer. So we're just going to wind this up, unballasted, and take a look at its characteristics. So as you can see, we'll start to wind up, note the voltage here on this meter, and the current on this one. So we'll just wind up slowly. So at that low voltage, we're hardly pulling much current at all. Around 150 volts, and we're starting to pull some current. Not much of an arc, but we're starting to pull some current. So here we go. We'll start getting up here guys and you'll notice the transformer starts to saturate from this point. If you watch the current meter as I wind up any further, that's the uh, transformer getting saturated. So basically we'll run it up just to into saturation and then we'll pull some arcs and note the current. As you can see guys, this thing pulls quite some current. Now obviously I'm using a Variac for this. Not everybody's got a Variac, so a ballasting can obviously come in useful for this situation. So we'll put a ballast in there and then take a look at it again. Right, as you can see, I've added three 400 watt ballasts to this now. So we'll take a look now then. 
So first thing you notice is we can put full voltage on this thing now without it going into saturation. In fact, it's a little bit more than full voltage. So that's obviously handy if we can just plug this straight onto the main supply without it saturating the core. So let's take a look at the arcs now then. So as you can see from that, it's much more tamed down now. We can actually pull arcs and be limited to 10 amps maximum. And obviously the more ballast we add in parallel with these, then the more current we can draw. Right guys, in this next demonstration, we're actually using a pair of capacitors in series with a secondary of the transformer to limit the current. And this is the preferred method by most high voltage enthusiasts, because as the transformer is an inductor, selecting the right capacitor here can create resonance. It's an LC circuit after all, so the right capacitor value and we can get much more output from the transformer. So like I said, this is the preferred method for most high voltage enthusiasts. I'll give a little demonstration guys. This is not resonant guys, I just wanted to demonstrate the current limiting ability of the capacitors. As you can see we're getting nearly the same size arc, much less voltage and much less current. So in this next part I want to show how we can use an inductive ballast to get more voltage from our transformers. Now this is a 120 volt neon sign transformer, it's from America so it's 120 volts on the primary. So if you just observe this. I think this is about the maximum jump we're going to get from this transformer running at the voltage it should run at. So as you can see we're already getting up there. I think we're over 120 now. And obviously, if we... yeah there we go guys. Obviously if we go much higher than that then the transformer is going to start to saturate. Like I say it is 120 volt. I'll just open that up a little bit more. Right guys, as you can see, we've got that sat just under 150 volts now. And we've got no arc over. And as I say, if I push this any harder, then obviously we're going to get saturation and we're going to get major heating. And that's not going to be good for the primary or the transformer. Right, so now we'll insert a series ballast in this and then we'll take a look at it again. Right guys, so we've inserted a series ballast now. So that will allow us to get a lot more voltage onto this transformer without the risk of saturation. We can still observe the voltage and current here, and I'll just wind it up and just see what we get. So as you can see, already past 150, and no current draw, or very little. Right, we'll open that up a little further. About 30 millimetres now. Looks like more. around 40 millimeters from where I'm stood. Right, we're just going to change this ballast out for a little higher wattage. So we've added another ballast now, we're in parallel with the first. And yeah, no problem. As you can see, we're jumping that much larger gap now, and still very little current draw. I think we better uh, modify those electrodes. All right, guys, we've got about 50 millimeter gap on there, which I think we can all agree is a massive jump for a 12 kV neon sign transformer. So I'll just wind this up, guys, and take a look, see if it can do it. Can 
There you go, guys. You saw it for yourself. 50 millimeters from a 12 kV NST. Be a follow-up video to this, guys, where I will actually show my saturable core reactor. For you guys who don't know, that's a variable ballast where we use DC to actually dictate the amount of current that can flow. All right, guys, that about wraps this up. So as always, thanks for watching. Take care, and there'll be more to come shortly. Thanks, guys.